Good evening, everyone. On behalf of India Foundation for the Arts, welcome to Date with the Archive. As some of you know, India Foundation for the Arts or IFA is an organization set up about 26 years ago that supports and implements projects across arts and culture, various discipline, language, regions across the country. In the past 26 years, we have made possible about 750 projects and the outcome of these projects as books, performances, exhibitions, archival material are out there for you to witness, to enrich yourselves. When we turned 20 a few years ago, we wondered how we should celebrate our 20 years of existence. And what we realized is that while all these amazing projects were happening, there was no one place where the materials from all these projects were being stored. So we decided to create the IFA archive, which now exists as a physical uh, space just above our Bangalore office and as an online platform uh, in the digital zone, where currently you can find the materials of about uh, 450 projects that we've so far supported. We are delighted that Arti Lohia and her institute, the Indorama Charitable Trust, has been supporting the creation and the maintenance of this archive from its very beginning. Now, we also felt that it is not enough to just put this material out there for people to uh, see, to work on, to look at, but also to create public engagement modes, just like this one, so that we can invite other artists, other creators, other scholars who have worked with archives and therefore can share their experiences with us. So that is what we are going to do today. And we have a, a brilliant presentation waiting for us. But before I pass this on, for a little more detail on Date with the Archive to my colleague, a few ground rules. We have been in webinars uh, for so long now that we know them, but I'm just going to repeat it once again. There is a chat box that you see here. We will be posting some information, some additional information uh, in the chat box. You are welcome to share your comments, suggestions, appreciations in the chat box. But if you have a question, and our guest today is going to have time for um, a set of questions at the end of the presentation, you can post those questions in the Q&A box. This is the Zoom uh, live, of course, but we are also live streaming on the India Foundation for the Arts Facebook page. And you can put your questions there if you're listening to us there. And there'll be somebody from IFA who will share these questions with us. The first date with the archive was with Navde Johar, who had shared his work with choreography and dance. We had the second one with Sunil Shanbagh, where he shared his work with theatre. And today we have Nancy Adjania, who's going to be sharing her work with archives with us. I will now pass this on to my colleague Prana from the archive to tell you a little more about Date with the Archive, as well as introduce Nancy. Pranav, over to you. Thank you, Arithati, and uh, a very good evening to everyone. Uh, so those of you uh, those of who are new here, I would like to introduce what the Date with the Archive is. So it is essentially a series of talks by artists across different practices uh, who have used archives extensively for, create, for, for their creative work to bring to focus the potential of the archive as a significant resource for artistic exploration. And uh, I'm happy to announce that for our third talk of the series, Date with the Archive, this evening we have with us uh, Nancy Adhajania, who is a cultural theorist and a curator based in Bombay. She was the joint artistic director of the ninth uh, Guangzhou Biennale uh, South in South Korea in 2012 and has curated a number of major research-based exhibitions, including the most recently, Women Is As Women Does at the CSMBS Museum, Bombay. In her presentation this evening, Nancy will take us through a curated exhibition, Women Is As Women Does, which brings together works by 27 Indian women artists, activists, filmmakers across five generations. After the presentation, Arundhati and I will take questions from the audience. Having said this, without further ado, I'd like to request Nancy to please take the stage. Thank you. 
Nancy. Thank you so much, Pranav, Arundhati, and the IFA team. I'll just put on my slideshow. Is this visible now? Uh, not really, uh, Nancy. Can you try that one more time? Yeah. Okay. Is it visible now? It's yes. it's up. It's up. Yes. Perfect. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Yeah. So. Um, the exhibition, Woman is as Woman Does, continues till 16th October. And for those who haven't seen it, please visit us at the CSMVS Museum in Bombay. Uh, this exhibition is organized uh, by the CSMVS in collaboration with the JNAF to celebrate the museum centenary as well as 75 years of India's independence. I'd like to thank Mr. Mukherjee, DG of CSMVS, for the invitation to curate this show and for his steadfast support towards it. I'd also like to thank the JNAF team, Pooja, Tamara, and Kartik. As Pranav already uh, said, Woman is, as, as, Woman is As Woman Does brings together 27 Indian women artists, as well as activists and filmmakers into a constellation. It takes the form of an intergenerational mapping we see five generations of Indian artists, women artists, sharing the same space here. The oldest artist being Zarina, born in 1935, and the youngest, Alkavi Nanavati, born in 1995. When Mr. Mukherjee invited me to curate an, an exhibition devoted to Indian women artists, um, the expectation was that I show five to six well-established practitioners. To begin with, I asked myself whether it was necessary to have an exhibition devoted to women artists at a time when they are widely represented and salient on the Indian art scene. I was sure I did not want to show uh, where, uh, you know, uh, I would be concentrating on a few star women artists. That is the default format of the Indian art world, which I wish to avoid. Having spent nearly three decades in the art world, and as someone trained in the social sciences, as well as filmmaking, I was always saddened by how the art world emphasizes the cult of the individual artist over the interplay between the individual and the collective from which all culture is produced. Mr. Mukherjee has famously described, sorry, Mr. Mukherjee has famously described CSMVS uh, as a people's museum. If it is a people's museum, we must have a show framed against the backdrop of a people's movement. In that spirit, I propose this exhibition, which contextualizes the works of five generations of women artists in terms of the large scale women's movement, which was galvanized in the 1970s with the Mathura rape case and gathered further momentum to successful protests for legal reforms in the 1980s. The show begins with an archival impulse, which is as much personal as it is political. The title of the show foregrounds female agency by referencing a seminal book that I read in my early 20s, Radha Kumar's The History of Doing, which historicized the Indian women's movement across the 19th and 20th centuries. I saw Shiba Chachi's photographs of the women's movement for the first time in Radha Kumar's book. The emphasis in this exhibition is on female artistic and activist labor, doing, interpreted as achieving the impossible, whether incrementally or through radical gestures. The artistic and curatorial interventions in Woman Is As Woman Does do not treat the archive as a fetish 
or a sealed object which is closed to argument and scrutiny. Rather, they unpack the archive through visual and textual annotations that are as rigorously factual as they are poetic in their affective intensity. Your visceral forms of resistance are staged in and through language, whether visual, scribal, oral, or gibberish, and through bodily substances or processes, whether blood, bruise, or libido. This exhibition does not consider gender as a static identity. The works in Woman is, in Woman is as Woman Does are inflected by an intersectional feminism. The participating artists belong to different classes, ethnicities, and caste groups. Those born to privilege are shown alongside those of Dalit or Adivasi origin. Artists who have concentrated on studio practice appear here with artists who produce zines and graphic novels, who've collaborated with subaltern artists, local communities, farmers, activists, and grandmothers. Such adjacencies between women artists of privilege and their counterparts from Dalit and Adivasi backgrounds rarely, if ever, take, take place in Indian exhibition making practice. This show functions as a corrective and as a counterpoint. Woman is as woman does takes its inspiration from the Marathi and the Hindi words for a movement or agitation, salwal, khalbali, or andolan. These terms are infinitely more active and sensorially rich rather than their anodyne English counterpart. It is such kinetic impulses that guide the works that I've assembled in Woman Is As Woman Does. While not all the works in this exhibition are informed by an archival consciousness, some of them could be seen to operate from a sense of an expanded archival imagination, which is necessarily democratic, fragmentary, and intimate. Traditionally, the archive has been premised on the past. It embodies a record of continuity. It provides precedent, proof, and genealogy. But increasingly today, given the urgencies of the planet, people of any discernment and wisdom are focusing on the future, which is highly precarious. It is the retrogressive elements who are caught up with their authoritarian invocations of an imagined past but anyone who cares for species survival or planetary renewal is creating a record for some imagined future. They are learning to look at the present with an archival consciousness already in anticipation of the future. So that when the plane of the present crashes, there will be a black box to pass on. There will be testimonies from the present which could help those who come later to understand what went wrong and what could be set, set right if the species were to have another chance. Woman is as woman does recognizes the weight of the past while challenging the present and summoning up a not yet future. As I said, the show begins in the 1980s phase, phase of the women's movement. I was in school at that time and uh, in the 80s. And I remember waking up every day in the morning to read these brutal newspaper headlines, woman burnt alive by in-laws. Woman was being constructed as a juridical subject in those years. The war over women's freedoms, their very right to exist, was being fought in the courtrooms and in the streets and in the newspaper and in, and in, and, and in the newspapers. The horror of dowry killings and rape was has been uh, invoked by Nilima Sheikh and Shiba Chachi in the works that we see in the exhibition. And uh, I'd just like to briefly talk about Nilima Sheikh's uh, uh, work. Uh, when Champa grew up, uh, was made in 1984, and we are showing a documentation of the work in the show. And I uh, actually saw it for the first time uh, when I was in college, when I visited the NCPA. Uh, and um, there uh, I encountered a slideshow of when Champa grew up. 
And um, I've always been fascinated by art that could articulate the political without being limited by its topicality. When Champa grew up was ostensibly an anti-dowry elegy, but in Nilima's handling, it has generated an aesthetic and a political surplus that refuses to be de depleted to this day. Almost four decades later, uh, in revisiting Champa, Nilima reconsiders the original series through painted and textual annotations. This is uh, a painting from the original series from 1984, the, the first one in the series. And this is revisiting Champa, uh, made in 2022, especially for the show. Uh, as I said, I've seen a slideshow of the series, but I never had a chance to see these works in the flesh. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I tried uh, to bring these works uh, to, to the CSM based museum, but um, the, the, the insurance and the transportation costs were, uh, were way too high to be able to, uh, to bring these works um, to Bombay. And uh, I thought perhaps uh, there's also an opportunity in this. Um, instead of showing the original series, what is even more rele relevant today is to do a revisitation of the original work. And Nilima was very kind enough to take up this challenge. And I think that what she's produced is something extremely powerful and it speaks to our urgencies today. Uh, the original series, which I just showed you, as you can see, of course they are borrowed, uh, the language of the series is borrowed from the miniature painting traditions and it's painted in these jewel tones. When you see the revisitation, uh, where the annotations are done on reproductions of drawings of the Champa series, because even the drawings uh, are not available anymore. So, but, but, but Nilima had some slides and from that she made these prints and then she made her annotations on them. And in this revisitation, uh, as you can see, it's bleached of color and uh, the color that you find appearing as a refrain or what we call the antara, like an, the antara of a song, uh, is is the color red and it appears uh, in the shades of ox blood or rust red or dried blood and uh, as the series progresses uh, you you see how nilima uh, brings this uh, work alive for us today uh, in, uh, in 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 this first work uh, on the left hand side you see do wakt now, Nilima has made very, very minimal annotations, but they are extremely deft uh, and provocative. Do wakt is the convergence of two tenses, the past and the present. And then in the right-hand corner, it says or champa. Now, or champa could mean a retake on the champa series or bahut sari or champai the one many other champas who have ha, have seen the same fate over the years uh, there's also another work which i'm not showing here because otherwise my ppt would really become ppt would become very heavy with images uh, is is when the is is when uh, champa is taken to the bridal chamber and where you'd expect this festive bunting and decoration on the walls uh, and on the floor but instead of that uh, in the revisitation, uh, you find uh, uh, broken skin and bruises and wounds floating around in the room. And on, this, uh, on these wounds, uh, you have the word, the hedge written. And so it's, so it's, it's, it's basically these, these wounds uh, fluttering around in the room and they are a premonition of what is to come. This is the last work in the series and uh, it, in, in this work, what you, what you see is uh, uh, a group of people, basic, basically men, who are just standing around passively. Uh, they're standing around a, a, a woman's corpse, which is shaped like a vagina. And of course, they're doing nothing. Uh, but what you see on the painting is, again, marks, uh, it, 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 is, it is stained with blood. And importantly, as if it's like the role of the end credits in a film, you have uh, the names of the sites and the names of, uh, of, of, of the women uh, who have faced uh, viol patriarchal violence. 
So you have um, Katua, Hatras, Unau, uh, Nirbhaya, Aruna, Tangra, uh, you, you have um, uh, Tongjom, um, Tongjom Manorama, uh, um, uh, and, and so forth. And um, uh, when, when, when the original series was shown, for instance, uh, Nilima had used, uh, uh, had, had, had accompanied uh, each painting with um, uh, the anti dowry songs, which were composed by women's groups in Gujarat in the 80s. Now, uh, when I first encountered uh, this series, um, uh, I, uh, I was, uh, of course, uh, told very lovingly uh, by, um, uh, by male, male artists uh, that, that, this is, this is, uh, th that this is an iconic series and uh, it, it, it is something that everybody must see and talk about. But what these male artists left out was that while they concentrated on the paintings, there were also these articulations of these women's groups. So in a way, while the paintings, uh, 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 they, they, the, the paintings show a mute champa um, uh, where, where she's not able to fight back, um, the, the songs that Nilima used alongside the paintings uh, very forcefully articulated the violence against women. And um, for example, here I've used one of the extracts, uh, which uh, uh, which very graphically talks about uh, uh, about uh, about the murder of a woman, uh, and this is a woman who was murdered uh, for dowry, and um, it, it's uh, it, it talks about uh, you know Himbad Gujara, the tyrant, uh, who uh, in connivance with uh, uh, with with his uh, with with his mother uh, murders um, uh, his wife. Uh, and uh, it, there's a refrain, Himmat Gujara, Astri Hatya Tane Lakshere. And uh, we have both the Gujarati translation uh, and the, uh, um, uh, the Gujarati original and the English translation on the wall. And uh, when I was thinking in terms of the exhibition design, um, I decided that uh, I, I wanted to, uh, to have um, a form which would speak to my viewers, which would uh, help them uh, to immerse, uh, which, would, uh, which would aid in immerse, which would help the, uh, the viewers to immerse themselves and be engaged in, a, in an active way with uh, with with the the documents uh, and the artworks on display, and uh, uh, this 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 idea of the speech bubble or the thought bubble came to me uh, when uh, I was dealing with uh, Shantibai's works, which you'll see later in the slideshow. And uh, Shantibai uh, can't write, and she uh, dictates her stories to her little niece Navti, and then Navti sends the 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 stories to us in Hindi, and then we translate them into English. And I just thought, how do I uh, display? How do I? Um, uh, do, how how do I? Uh, in a way, include all these different articulations by women who are literate, by women who uh, who cannot even sign their own name, um, by by women of privilege, by by women of uh, coming from very vulnerable backgrounds. Uh, and uh, how do I play witness to the multiple decibel levels of the show? So uh, in, in the show, uh, you have uh, so certain sonic shocks, like, for example, this, this speech bubble, uh, which, uh, which, has, uh, uh, which includes an anti-dowry song, but you also have thought bubbles, which are rounded or, or squarish in shape, uh, which, uh, are, uh, which uh, embody the articulations of, uh, of artists uh, in a more contemplative tone. And even the walls of the show, uh, uh, for example, I just have these two, two accent walls. One is red and the other is yellow. Uh, red was very important because as I was uh, looking at the works, uh, uh, you know, which I'd selected for the show, uh, th the color red uh, would, uh, would constantly appear as a refrain in, in many of the works. And um, red is, is, is the color of passion, of blood, of frenzied madness, of Junoon. And that's why one of the walls is red and the other is yellow because it's a projective color. It does not implode inside itself um, and it, it projects out. Uh, and uh, in a way, it just you know, reminds me of, uh, uh, of, of you know, this, this, this idea of uh, how, uh, you know, when we are listening to Indian classical music, uh, it's, it's not uh, as, um, you know, it's, it's not, it's not about uh, rasa, but uh, it's about rang. And um, uh, 
in, in woman versus woman does uh, these accent walls uh, uh, act, uh, enact rather, um, rank as zuban. Uh, so the, the color itself is, is an embodiment of speech or the lack of speech. And um, what we have here is uh, Shiva Chachi's uh, uh, excerpts from, a, uh, from the women's movement. Uh, and uh, these are works from the 80s to the mid 90s. Uh, Shiva Chachi was uh, both uh, a, a participant in the women's movement. She was the founder member of Jaguri along with Kamla Bhaseen who you see in, uh, on the yellow wall and Abha Bhaiya and other colleagues. And uh, she, was, uh, she played witness to the women's movement uh, 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 and she also chronicled uh, it. And therefore we have this, these works of great historic value. And in fact, works which are like conversation pieces, uh, which speak to us today uh, as powerfully as, as they spoke to the women in the Bastis when they were first shown. And they were shown first uh, just, uh, you know, with these clothes clips, uh, you know, um, uh, on, on, on strings, uh, you know, which, 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 uh, which connected uh, one room of the Basti to another. And uh, Shiva would 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 be uh, would be part of the movement, uh, part of a part of these protest marches, shouting slogans. Then she would step out, um, uh, take pictures of of fellow women activists, and then join uh, the protest march again. And you can see from uh, from from the the kind of visual vocabulary that emerges from these photographs, it's women with upraised arms, uh, with open mouths and balled up fists. Uh, these are women in the eighties who have. Uh, poured out into the streets in large numbers. They are fighting against dowry debts. They're fighting against rape, against female infanticide. Um, and in this show, again, the idea is to not fetishize Shiba's work. So uh, the, the way we've shown it is again, is, is on these light metallic stands. And when you are in the show, uh, they just, uh, feel, uh, just feel as if these are photo placards, which you can pick up and then go, go and join a procession uh, you know, outside the museum. Uh, so there's a sense of immediacy. And uh, 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 behind on the wall, you, you, uh, you see uh, Kamla Basin. Kamla Basin was also the founder me member of Jagori. And uh, uh, I, um, I'll, I'll, I'll come to Kamla Basin's work as well. Uh, but I'd first like to dwell a little bit more on, 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 on Shiva's work. Uh, so this is a photograph of, uh, you know, which, which shows uh, Molayashri Hashmi um, enacting uh, Aurat, uh, which was uh, uh, directed uh, by Jannatya Manch. And uh, uh, Aurat, uh, uh, the script was developed in 1979, and it was written by Safdar Hashmi. Uh, and uh, he was influenced, the trigger for this play was, uh, was, uh, was a, a, a poem written by the Iranian um, uh, revolutionary teacher, uh, Marize Emadi uh, Uskui. Uh, and um, uh, I, I wanted to sh also show, uh, sh show you how, uh, when we talk about the women's movement in India, it's not as if there is one single movement. There are many movements and there are many feminisms. So on the one hand, you have a street play, uh, which is photographed by Shiva um, Aurat in 1979. And then on the other hand, you have another street play also photographed by Shiva, where you see uh, these important fi of, of feminists, uh, Urvashi Butalia, uh, who was the co-founder uh, of Kali, along with Ritu Menon. You, find, you see Maya Rao, the theater actor, and you see the theater director, Anuradha Kapoor. And uh, Om Swaha was also developed in 1979, uh, and it was developed as a collaboration by women, for women, and it was developed between uh, the women activists of um, Sri Sangarsh, uh, along with um, Maya Rao uh, and Anuradha Kapoor. Uh, and in subsequent iterations, you also see uh, the, uh, Rati Bartholomew um, in, 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 the, in, in, in the photographs. And of course, many, many other feminist uh, sisters. Uh, uh, the reason why I, I also wanted to draw your attention to both these uh, plays is that both plays were extremely successful, uh, but one was written by, uh, by, uh, uh, by a male activist, uh, and, and another was written, uh, who, who of course uh, 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 is, is, um, uh, is, is a writer with leftist uh, leanings, and therefore uh, his play is in, in, uh, inflected with, the leftist, with leftist politics. And on the other hand, you have um, uh, 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 
Sri Sangarsh, which is a, a women's group, which is part of the autonomous women's movement. Um, so you see how uh, both these plays inflect female agency uh, in different ways. Um, uh, here you have uh, Shiba Chachi's photographs, and then you also have uh, on the left hand side, you have Arshi, Irshad, Ahmed Zai, and you have pages from her blood book uh, uh, and uh, from 2020, 2021. And um, um, Arshi, Irshad, Ahmed Zai's uh, ancestors came from uh, Afghanistan. She was born in UP. She studied in Delhi at the Jamia Melia. Uh, and um, and, uh, and, and uh, she was living bet uh, between Delhi and Kabul, but now she lives in Germany. And uh, when you when you when 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 you look at her works, um, uh, uh, you know you might just ask. So so uh, why are Shiba's works placed next to um, Arshi uh, Arshi's works? And um, the reason I was doing this was also a kind of intuitive connection uh, with something that I said earlier, which is the expanded archival imagination. So on the one hand, you have. Uh, works which are properly invested with an archival consciousness, like the revisitation of Champai by Nilama or Shiva's photographs from the 80s. And then on the other hand, you have uh, Arshi, who is also uh, creating an archive. But this is a personal archive. It's an archive which, uh, which is recording uh, her period pain. So every month for three, three to four days when she's, uh, you know, uh, uh, when she's menstruating, uh, she makes uh, a, a, a couple of drawings. A couple of paintings. And what's also interesting is the materials that you find within this uh, show. As I said, there are zines, graphic novels, there are paintings, photo placards, performance videos. Uh, and even within the paintings, you have oils, watercolors. Uh, you have a work, uh, you have Arshi's work here, which is uh, made with ink and flower, flower dyes uh, and papier mache uh, on Manzarpat, which is, uh, you know, this untreated canvas. And uh, in a way, it's the right choice because uh, uh, because it's untreated and porous, it also can absorb blood. So it's perfect for uh, for you know uh, these paintings on menstruation. And um, uh, Arshi has these beautiful um, Urdu uh, titles which go with the works. And in a way, so again, like with Zarina's works, you, uh, you not only see the works but you also read the works. And the titles are, for example, on the left hand side, you see Ek Raat Kalal Khwab. So it's this kind of, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a nightmare of blood that, that, that emerges on the wall. And uh, at the center, you have a work which is uh, titled Talk Zuban, which is this acidic uh, tongue. And when you're going through your periods, of course, you have this acidic breath, you, or you have uh, you know, back aches and stomach aches. And here you have uh, Arshi or Arshi's persona, uh, rather, wearing this talk zuba, uh, uh, you know, and this acidic tongue, like a pendant around her neck. And then the last one, which is my favorite, uh, which is uh, mashkola or zameen ka ek tukra. And mashkola is, of course, a hot water bottle. Uh, it's, it's, it gives you relief, uh, uh, you know, from your period pain. But uh, even as you see this gold smeared hot water bottle, which is meant to heal you, uh, in, her, in one of her hands, she's holding this, uh, you know, flesh pink shard uh, of earth, of zameen, uh, of, of earth, homeland. And, uh, and, and uh, you just see this very uh, thin line of blood, uh, you know, contouring her fingers, which hold this shard of Zameen. And uh, when I was thinking uh, about uh, Arshi's life choices and where she is today, uh, the fact that she could not stay with her husband in Kabul because uh, the Taliban came back uh, and uh, uh, both she and her husband were forced to, uh, to live in a third place, neither India nor Afghanistan, but, uh, but, but in Germany. And it made me think, uh, where is Zameen for for Arshi? Uh, you know, uh, and uh, I mean, this this entire body of work is is exquisite, uh, very powerful. And in a way, when you look at Arshi's work, uh, you see a certain family resemblance with Nilima's works as well. Um, you have. Baran and Jalal, Baran and Munis uh, with sculptures, with paintings, um, and uh, uh, the, the the motif of the procession, uh, which, uh, which, uh, which 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 is already initiated through Shiba's photo placards, uh, is then in a way uh, it, it it rhymes itself uh, within Baran's works, and you have these um, these processions of uh, of, of refugees, um, these armies of refugees. Um, there are pregnant women, there are disabled people, uh, there are hungry people, um, and 
and and and and these processions are accompanied by the by by blood moons, and the blood moon could be seen as a metaphor for eclipsed histories, um, histories uh, from which uh, uh, the, the marginalized have been erased, uh, violently erased. And uh, of course, on the right hand side, you uh, another, another one of my favorite sc uh, sculptures where you have a woman with a megaphone. And uh, so this, this need to um, articulate oneself uh, to the need to shout out slogans, um, slogans which uh, begin sometimes begin in poetry or, or, or what begins as poetry can uh, sometimes turns into slogans. Uh, this is uh, just you know one of those little things that you know one one does uh, at an artisanal level uh, in a show and uh, sometimes uh, the viewers pick them pick it up and sometimes they don't but it's important for me to do it and so you have uh, the shadow of uh, Shiva's photo placard falling on the wall uh, which has uh, Ita Mehrotra who's in her early 30s uh, and her work is uh, on the Chipko Andolan and uh, for me it's almost like uh, as if the dolphin is imprinting her child in her womb. So um, this this notion of imp of imprinting uh, of of of, imp of of this notion of imp of a sense of impress or imprint uh, between generations is also very important for me. And it's not as if the all the older artists know all the younger artists and vice versa. But I thought that if I create this multilog uh, between these artists, then this would become uh, an interesting starting point for people to take these conversations ahead. So rather than just show, uh, you know, uh, uh, friendships which uh, which are which are already uh, uh, present in the art world and which have now sort of coalesced and congealed, uh, I also wanted to uh, create a dialogue between artists who don't even necessarily know each other or have not necessarily necessarily encountered each other's works. Uh, Ita Mehrotra's work is a comic scroll. It's called Forest Song. As I said, it's on the Chipko Andolan, and the Chipko Andolan in the seventies um, uh, initiated ecofeminism in India. And um, uh, Ita um, uh, 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 decided to, uh, to, to interview uh, Sudesha Devi. And uh, Sudesh, Sudesha Devi is one of the, uh, the pioneers of the Chipko Andolan along with Gora Devi and Bachni Devi. And uh, normally when you read the history of um, the Chipko Andolan, it's all, you, you always hear the names of Chandi Prasad Bhatt and Sundar Lal Bahugana. But, uh, uh, you must remember that Chipko was a grassroots levels movement, which was led by women for women, and uh, they hugged the uh, they they hugged the trees, uh, and that that that's the symbolic gesture, uh, and that's why it's called Chipko Andolan uh, to 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 save their trees from timber contractors who wanted to fell their trees and uh, timber contractors and government officials who came with 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 uh, with guns to shoot them down and to destroy their trees, and. Um, uh, and and, and um, in, in in this um, uh, uh, comic scroll, uh, what, what is also very interesting is again, uh, it's it's the, the gift of uh, of, um, of of knowledge uh, of which which is then sort of bestowed from one generation to another. So you have uh, uh, Sudesha Devi uh, giving uh, renewable seeds to Ita to take them with her. So this uh, this ethic of uh, of renewable seeds, this ethic of uh, of of, uh, of protecting our environment uh, for the future generations, that ethic in a way, it, almost like a, a, like like a like a relay, uh, you know, I mean, uh, as if in a relay, the baton, uh, you know, exchanges uh, one generation uh, in the hands of, of one generation, uh, and then and then uh, appears in the hands of another generation. And uh, these are some of the images from 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 the comic scroll. Uh, on the yellow wall, which has uh, uh, films by Anupama Chandra uh, and Uma Tanaku, uh, um, their film is called "The Books We Made." Uh, in 2016, it was made in 2016, and uh, it's about um, uh, it's. It's it, it it is about the, the feminist press Kali, but it's it's not just about about Kali. It's about uh, the friendships that are sustained within the women's movement, um, and um, what you see on uh, on on the screen uh, is this uh, wonderful interlude where uh, uh, Urvashi Butalia, who you saw in Shiva's play placard. Uh, talks about uh, the book Sharir Ki Jankari, which Kali brought out. And uh, Sharir Ki Jankari was a women's health manual, which was made uh, and illustrated uh, by 75 women in, uh, from rural uh, Rajasthan. 
and they made a, a health manual for themselves, uh, arguing uh, about you know how 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 should they figure the woman's body, how should they talk about menstruation, about um, uh, uh, about the various ailments that affect uh, women's bodies, and 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 how can women heal themselves? And um, on, on, on the right hand side, you, you have uh, Akitami, uh, who I'll just come to. Um, uh, uh, she, um, uh, uh, she, she's again in her 30s, early 30s, like uh, Ita Mehrotra, uh, and from a, uh, from a completely different generation to Urvashi Butalia and Ritu Menon. Um, and um, her poster uh, 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 stridently says, We, not the invisible, but the invincible. Uh, Another film that is also there um, uh, on this yellow wall is um, the work of Paramita Vora, uh, Unlimited Girls, made in uh, 2002. And uh, uh, it's a, this is an exceptional film, both are, uh, uh, but this film uh, is not a classic documentary uh, and uh, it works in the interstices between uh, fiction and nonfiction. And uh, Paramita Vora uh, has, is never uh, you know, scared or embarrassed um, about using uh, elements of uh, of kitsch or humor in in her work, and uh, 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 for example, uh, when she, when she was making Unlimited Girls, uh, she decided to use the chat room, uh, which is a, which was which at that time uh, was uh, 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 the, the underground uh, zone of of the internet world, uh, where uh, all kinds of transgressive conversations went on, and um, uh, I decided to. Uh, uh, you know, pick up this particular excerpt of the feminist chat room from Paramita's uh, film and highlight that in the exhibition again to stress that uh, that 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 the the people that that the women who people the women the women's movement are uh, come from uh, different locations and contexts. You will have a Gandhian feminist. You will have a far left uh, uh, Maoist feminist. You will have a socialist feminist. You will have a reluctant feminist. So all these conversations are happening as a multi log in the feminist uh, chat room. Um, and um, here's Kamla Basin uh, with her um, appraised arm and. Uh, 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 this is a portrait by Janatul Mava, and uh, I've used um, and, uh, uh, some of her Azadi slogans uh, ne next to her portrait. Uh, and as Ababaya uh, told me, uh, although uh, sometimes uh, you know, people call it an, uh, call it an Azadi poem, uh, these are, uh, according to her, these are slogans. And uh, 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 Kamla uh, would meter these slogans uh, according to the constituency that she was speaking to. And uh, these Azadi slogans, uh, 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 they emerge from an intersectional feminism. Um, uh, and Kamla did not just speak about gender. She was speaking about gender and Adivasi rights, gender and Dalit rights, gender and workers' rights. Um, and so you have the Azadi slogan here, from patriarchy Azadi, from all hierarchy Azadi, from endless violence Azadi, from helpless silence Azadi, for walking freely, for talking freely, for dancing madly, for singing loudly, for self-expression, for celebration. We love it madly. Come say it loudly, Azadi. So behind the yellow wall, uh, where you have the works of senior feminists, uh, you have a younger feminist, uh, um, Akitani, and she started the sister library in Bandra, uh, and it's a community-owned community feminist library. And uh, uh, what is interesting is that the work that I've chosen, Burning Titipati, uh, of, Aki, of Aki's, uh, uh, she did this work. Uh, the work actually began as um, as research uh, for a Zuba fellowship, and Zuba is basically uh, Urvashi Butalia's uh, publishing imprint. So again, you can see the connection between the generations. And um, uh, uh, Zuba um, uh, um, uh, has has encouraged um, uh, dialogue um, uh, with. Uh, narratives that are normally marginalized from our mainstream discourse, especially uh, narratives from the Northeast. Uh, so uh, you have uh, Aki, uh, who's made Burning Tite Patti, and um, she, uh, she's, uh, through her research, she interviewed uh, 10 Himalayan indigenous grandmothers, or Bojus, as she calls them in Nepali. And uh, uh, 
she uh, she would be foraging along with the grandmothers in the forest. Uh, she would uh, be fermenting uh, many of these herbs. Uh, and these herbs are both, uh, you know, I mean, they can be eaten, but they also have medicinal properties. And uh, for, for her, this is a way of decolonizing um, knowledge, uh, you know, rather than uh, only um, taking allopathic medicines, which, uh, uh, which of course, um, feed into um, this uh, multi-dollar, uh, you know, in the industry um, of, of, of uh, allopathy, uh, and which is only, of course, resonant of greed for profit. Uh, it, it's important to retrieve our wisdom traditions. It's important to retrieve our herbs uh, to heal our bodies and to heal our planets. Now, Aki uh, was born in Darjeeling and uh, she um, uh, uh, came away to, uh, uh, to mainland India uh, 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 and where, where she studied in Hyderabad. She studied social work and she has uh, created a kind of tangential entry into into the art world uh, you won't see Aki's works um, uh, you know uh, very regularly in, in in art galleries although she has shown uh, in, in in few exhibitions uh, her work has been shown in few exhibitions in the in the gallery circuit um, you will normally find her in Bombay uh, sitting on the on the threshold um, uh, you know uh, 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 in, the, in, the, in the threshold space um, just outside the gallery and uh, this threshold space is a very important space because uh, you know you are neither a complete outsider nor a complete insider. And you'll see her selling her zines, her artist books, her sister times. And what we have on the table here are um, her zines and uh, sister times, uh, which she reduced during the COVID lockdown. Uh, connecting Akitami, uh, her, her aspiration to heal the planet. Uh, and uh, to retrieve the wisdom lineages of our grandmothers and mothers uh, is, is a work by Shweta uh, Bhattad, who, uh, who started the Gram Art uh, Collective. And um, the Gram Art Collective is a, is, is a, um, is a collaborative space. Uh, it, it includes um, artists. It also includes uh, homemakers. Um, it includes farmers, agricultural policy experts, activists, uh, and the, uh, the, the, um, the uh, Shweta Bhattar, interestingly, uh, and um, you, you'll, find, you'll get a little bit of a junkie into her story. Uh, 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 what I decided was, just as I was using the speech bubbles, I decided, uh, why not just uh, you know, um, uh, uh, pick up some pages from her Insta album? Because I just felt that when Shweta wrote on, uh, on Instagram, uh, she was able to be extremely spontaneous, uh, which of course doesn't happen when artists try and pr uh, write proposals, which are normally meant for funding agencies. And then so much of what artists write turns into you know, proposals speak. So uh, the Instagram is 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 also an is is also mini archive. So I decided to pick up some pages from her Insta album, and that gives you a story of how she studied sculpture at MSU. Uh, and uh, in fact, there's a very interesting uh, uh, you know a page here which talks uh, which shows a bust, which uh, you know which was a remnant from her days at MSU when she was a sculpture student, and it was just a bust that she you know made during her apprentice uh, level days. And it, it seemed to be there, you know, uh, along with a lot of other waste um, in, in, uh, in this village, Parat Singha, uh, where, uh, the, uh, where the Gram Art Collective is located. And um, she had no use for this uh, apprentice level work, but she decided that, uh, you know, on, on, uh, on the farm where they all work collectively, uh, they needed uh, scarecrows. So she asked, um, uh, you know, her artist friends to paint uh, this bust, uh, uh, you know, realistic bust with garish uh, colors or garish organic colors. And then they turned this bust into an art school bust into a scarecrow and put it up in their field, uh, in, in, in their farm. Uh, so so it, this is also a way to, to show her transition from an art school student to uh, somebody who uh, you know works with productive politics, and uh, uh, th there are many beautiful uh, vignettes here. Um, uh, like for example, in amongst these balloon uh, wines, she found uh, she found a heart shaped uh, uh, you know uh, 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 grain, and uh, also. Um, uh, uh, Another page that I've chosen is where they are just having their regular meetings, and uh, one of the women is just, you know, caressing uh, her her pet dog, and, um, and I think that this is very important because in some ways this also symbolize, symbolizes Shweta Bhattad's work, um, and of course, as Shweta always says, that she's part of a collective, um, and it's not just her; it's all these homemakers, activists together, and. Uh, uh, 
the collective blurs the lines between human and non-human, between art and non-art. Um, and um, I think I should not go on for too long with each artist, otherwise I won't be able to finish my lecture unless we want to sit all night. Uh, uh, these are, um, uh, you know, Shweta has also made plantable flags, seed crackers, uh, seed rakhis. So these are all plantable. Uh, so again, it is uh, encouraging um, uh, the, the ethic of, uh, of greenness, uh, of, um, of uh, saving our planet uh, rather than destroying it uh, with plastic and uh, other such uh, materials. Uh, we have, um, so, so you have all, you have these uh, various practices, you have Akitami, and then you see Shweta Bhattad's work, and then after Shweta Bhattad's work, you see uh, Durgabai Vyam and Ranjita Kumari's works. Uh, and uh, Durgabai Vyam uh, was uh, mentored by, uh, she's an artist of Pardhan Gond uh, heritage, uh, and um, she was uh, mentored by um, her relative, Jankar Singh Sham, who, start, uh, who uh, as uh, Udayan Vajpayee uh, says, he started the Jankar Kalam, the Jankar School of Art. And um, of course, she has then, uh, you know, invested her own feminist subject uh, subjectivity into uh, this Jankar Kalam. Uh, and uh, a, a lot of her work is also based on the stories that her grandmother told her. And um, uh, I could have, of course, shown some paintings by Durga Vyam, which would have been fine. But I decided uh, instead, since I'm talking about intersectional feminism also, that intersectional feminism doesn't only have to be women artists of privilege, then joining hands with women artists uh, coming from vulnerable backgrounds. It can also be, uh, you know, the, that you, you can have an artist like Durga Vyam who uh, works on, an, uh, on the biography of Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar, uh, who was this visionary uh, anti-caste um, thinker uh, and activist. And uh, you have somebody fr from an Adivasi background working on a Dalit theme uh, and, uh, and, and thereby expressing her solidarity with, um, with, uh, with, with, uh, with uh, the kind of oppression that both communities have suffered um, across the centuries. Uh, and um, uh, you, you, uh, in the exhibition, you see pages from the book. And um, again, in the speech bubble, uh, what you have is Durga Vai Vyam uh, talking about how when she, uh, she and Sabash Vyam, who she collaborated with on this uh, book, the Bhimayan, uh, and they, 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 they would uh, you know, often go to the Navayan office when, uh, when the publisher Esanan wasn't there and uh, the landlady uh, would, would talk to them rudely because for them, although Durgabai and Subhash Vyam have won major awards, um, they still, she still just saw them as a uh, subaltern couple. Uh, so, so again, uh, it's it's uh, you know emphasizing the, the uh, you know the, the kind of oppression that they have that that, that they continue to suffer despite uh, being such brilliant artists and despite having been fettered both within the country and uh, around the world. What's also interesting is that Durga Bhai Vyam and Sabash Vyam, uh, you know, uh, did not uh, use the, the Western boxed in panels, uh, which would be um, uh, the, the format that you would use to, uh, you know, to make a graphic novel. Uh, instead, they, uh, they insisted on using their own traditional, uh, this kind of corded and crenellated line, which is called the digna, which is used to decorate their rooms and their floors. And um, the, the Digna then allowed them to create a very fluid riverine uh, narrative, which allowed them to go, you know, make, uh, make many detours. Uh, and um, uh, in fact, uh, Esanan talks about how he had to uh, change 40% of the text and the dialogue to suit their illustrations. Normally, uh, the illustrator just basically illustrates whatever is written for them. And here you have Durga Bhai Vam's work, and then next to that you have Ranjita um, uh, Kumari's work. You, um, I've shown two bodies of her work, um, uh, a body of paintings, uh, as well as uh, a video, a performance video by her. Um, uh, by her. And um, these paintings are, again, extremely powerful. And as I was telling you about uh, our Arshi's work and how Arshi uses man manzar part and um, flower dye and stuff like that, uh, here you have um, uh, Ranjita uh, using her own hair, uh, using uh, you know uh, pieces of cloth or dupattas, uh, also using crystal stones. And uh, Ranjita Kumari is an artist uh, uh, of the, uh, of um, uh, who uh, of Dalit heritage, and uh, uh, she was uh, she she studied at the Patna uh, Fine Arts College. Then she went to Shivnadar to study further, uh, and. Um, 
I have uh, had the privilege to have many uh, beautiful conversations uh, with her. Um, and I've also um, written um, an essay on her in the, in the Internationale, which is there on the net if you'd like to read. Um, and um, uh, I've often talked to her about uh, the two different worlds that 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 sort of in a way uh, you know collapse in her practice. Uh, her father's world. Her father will, uh, is a Marxist Ambedkarite, and then her mother's world. Um, her, as she says, her mother uh, you know uh, uh, didn't have the chance to uh, educate herself, and uh, it's the world of Alekhya. Uh, so it's not the world of of, of books or uh, of or or the world of scribal tradition, but uh, the world of oral tradition and um, and it is uh, from her mother's world that 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 she, that she uh, she retains the gifts of making sujanis of storytelling uh, of singing songs and um, in these works uh, you you uh, what is expressed are the the, the repressions uh, the disquiets of domesticity uh, you can see how an ordinary de ordinary detail like just a dupatta which is hanging on the clothesline um, it, it's running color and of course we know that it's it's not just uh, it's not just running color because uh, the color is as we would say in india kacha but it's running color because it, it's bleeding and and what is uh, what is bleeding is not just the cloth but also the heart and the mind um, of, of 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 the person uh, who uh, who who uh, who who actually uses this this particular uh, accoutrement, and uh, you have uh, Gali Geet by uh, by Ranjita Kumari, and um, uh, Gali Geet is uh, is is uh, it's 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 a group song. They are called teasing songs. Uh, it's it's in Bhojpuri and Magahi, uh, and it's um, uh, it's it's sung by uh, women from the Dalit community. Uh, and um, you'll also find, I think, um, uh, our Ranjita's uh, mom uh, in, in this in this video, and of course all her relatives and her friends. And uh, uh, I, I really love this video because we've been discussing this. She's been on this uh, for for a few years. And uh, 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 what would in you know in so-called civilized context be construed as uh, vulgar uh, in 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 Gali um, uh, what, what you what you find is women uh, you know who, who are speaking about sex and sexuality um, uh, and transgressiveness uh, in uh, an extremely uh, comfortable manner. Um, they are laughing and joking and. Um, uh, they, they are uh, in, everybody seems to be having sex with everybody else um, and 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 this whole heteronormative normative understanding of uh, what is a family uh, you know uh, the binaries of gender and so forth uh, completely um, uh, you know are, are completely debunked in this in this video and what is also really uh, beautiful is the fact that uh, this is the only space the liminal space uh, where uh, these women who otherwise have very hard lives uh, are able to express themselves to dance to sing to cry uh, and 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 it is this liminal space which also uh, needs uh, to be foregrounded in the show uh, and again as i was uh, reading you azadi uh, kamla kamla basin's azadi slogans uh, you know we have to denounce patriarchy not just in you know in extreme earnestness but also while laughing and singing and dancing uh, we uh, and and from this uh, you know I mean uh, performance video, which is a collective performance video of Ranjita Kumari's, um, I come to uh, Pushpamala's uh, abduction series on the Ramayan and what she calls a kind of sideways glance into the Ramayan, and um, uh, I, I along with this actually I wanted to show um, uh, 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 the early work of uh, Pushpas, her terracotta sculptures, and they are the finest that I've ever seen. Uh, we couldn't do that because the collector was not ready to part with the works, but I do hope I can show these terracotta sculptures from the 80s. And um, uh, and, I, and I know I'm in this kind of memoir, mem memoiristic mood, but uh, I remember I was, in, I was in college or had I just finished college, and I think, uh, was it Bose or he had um, organized um, a lecture demonstration at uh, the JJ School of Art, and I remember going there and I saw um, Pushpa, this tall, handsome woman talking about her work and I immediately fell in love with her and the, her terracotta sculptures. And, um, they, and, and they, they just remain on my mind screen, you know, uh, despite um, the fact that, you know, they were make, made decades um, ago. And, uh, 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 and 
when, when, you, when you look at those terracotta sculptures of these Timusun girls, um, you know, what, at the edge of puberty, uh, you, you would have seen this kind of a subject also dealt by male artists, especially by um, K.G. Subramaniam um, in his terracotta reliefs, but also in his uh, paintings. But those, uh, come, uh, they, those are always mediated through a male gaze. Uh, but what we were seeing for the first time is uh, the foregrounding of the female gaze in, in uh, Pushpa's terracotta sculptures. And, uh, you know, you just find a woman, uh, you know, wearing uh, a bra, for instance, and I'd never seen something like this uh, in, in um, contemporary in, uh, Indian art. Uh, or, or uh, one of my favorite sculptures, which is Girl with a Shell, and I hope one day to be able to show it and to share, with, share it with all of you. Um, I mean, just to also briefly talk about uh, uh, the sideways glance into the Ramayana. Uh, it, as we know, there isn't a, any single version of the Ramayana. There are many hundreds, many Ramayans. There are hundreds of Ramayans, uh, and um, they are told from different perspectives um, and from different locations within India. Um, they are they are told by people of privilege. They are told by people of subaltern backgrounds. They are told by uh, artisans, uh, you know, from uh, you know Ratnagiri in Maharashtra. They they are told by the transgender community. Um, uh, stories from the Ramayana are told by the transgender community in Karnataka, and so forth. And uh, one of my uh, favorites in this, uh, uh, you know, uh, this triptych uh, from, from the abduction series is the work by Pushpa where, oh, I have missed that uh, slide, is, is where, uh, uh, where um, uh, she, she, she's enacting the persona of uh, Sita and she's, uh, looking in, in, uh, she's looking at a reflection in the pond. And of course, uh, uh, as always, uh, you know, I mean, there, there is, uh, you know, um, the, the male reflection, which which immediately comes in uh, to disturb uh, this this, uh, this 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 very uh, calm and meditative uh, moment, and it's it's the reflection of um, of, of Ravan. Uh, but what is important is that despite this disruption of Ravan, uh, uh, you know. It, it, uh, the Pushpa persona uh, or Sita is holding on to the frame of the pond. And by holding on to the frame of the pond, uh, we could say that she's also holding on to the frame of the story. She's finding a way, uh, uh, kind of, again, edgeways to be able to also uh, to, to make her point within the story. Because otherwise, uh, you know, when we, when we think about the Sita story, she's always defined by other male figures, uh, which is extremely annoying. Uh, you know, uh, I won't go further into this. Otherwise, we'll be here for the whole night. So next one, um, uh, along with um, uh, Pushpa's um, uh, 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 performative portraits, you also have uh, Vidya uh, Kamath's um, uh, 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 spe spectacular uh, uh, photograph. Um, and um, it, 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 it's a tongue which is, uh, you know, uh, sort of st uh, stitched with this Zardozi embroidery. And again, um, for, uh, this is very this is very important work for me because again, it's talking about different decibel levels in the show. It's talking about the zuba. Uh, you know, uh, how can how do we articulate ourselves? Uh, how much can we speak? How much remains unsaid? Uh, what happens when your tongue is stitched up? Uh, and uh, but also along with uh, questions of zuba uh, and the spoken and the unspoken, uh, there's also uh, something tantric which is happening within this work. So there's a certain kind of underlying eroticism as well. And, they, and, and this is what makes the work uh, not just, uh, you know, kind of propaganda for this or that ideological agenda, but it makes it complex. As I was saying uh, in Nilima's work or in many of the works in this exhibition, uh, they leave behind um, uh, uh, an aesthetic and a political surplus. And therefore you can look at them again and again over the decades. Um, these were works that, uh, the earlier works that I showed, they were from the, uh, the JNF, JNAF, the Jangir Nicholson Art Foundation. Uh, I was just supposed to put together a few artists at the JNAF, but instead my show grew and grew. And now, uh, I, therefore, I had to request uh, for, a, for another gallery. And therefore, um, my uh, show is staged between the Jangir Nicholson Art Foundation as well as the Prem Chand Roy Chand Gallery. So those who are coming to the CSMBS Museum, please see both parts of the exhibition. Uh, this is the Prem Chand Roy Chand Gallery. And um, uh, what, what you see here is um, a photograph um, of um, Sharmish Sarai. 
uh, suspended from, uh, from, 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 from the ceiling. And um, you, uh, on the red wall, you see Gargi Raina's uh, work, constructing the memory of a room. In the foreground, you see uh, Shilpa um, Gupta's um, uh, 100 hand-drawn maps of India. And um, uh, on the right-hand side of the wall, you see um, uh, other abstractionist works, um, uh, Purvai, Purvai Rai, um, uh, uh, as well as uh, Zarina Hashmi. And I will come to, um, uh, 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 to the works of these female abstractionists um, and, and um, what I have called elsewhere the politicality of abstraction. But um, uh, let me first uh, engage with um, Sharmishta's work. Uh, so, um, uh, 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 when I was talking about uh, the woman being constructed as a juridical subject and uh, the the the, uh, the women activists fighting against um, uh, dowry, rape, and so forth, um, they were they were fighting for social and legal reforms, and uh, these were burning issues of the day. So therefore, um, uh, you know, questions of se uh, of sexuality, for instance, uh, you know, uh, were not raised or even if they were raised, they were not necessarily uh, discussed um, as much as they should have been in the early years uh, of, the, of the women's movement. And um, Ruth Vanita, uh, the author of um, Same Sex Love in India, uh, book which was brought out in 2000, um, she, uh, I had read a memoir of hers where she spoke about how, because in those early years, of, you know, in, in, in the 80s and the 90s, um, you know, although, you know, they, they would always, the, the feminists would always uh, be uh, chanting the slogan, the personal is the political, uh, she, she, she uh, talks about how uh, in a, uh, as far as a certain private aspect of her selfhood uh, went, which is lesbianism, uh, that particular private aspect of her life uh, was 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 uh, was something that could not be discussed, uh, and um, and and therefore, uh, uh, you know, uh, she she lamented the fact that the personal was not always the political in the women's movement, and of course. Uh, in in later years, uh, you know, the, the, these these uh, discussions also became part of the women's movement, but it took time. Uh, and um, uh, Ruth Vanita was actually, I mean, I read Ruth Vanita and of course Madhukishwar as well in Manushi. Uh, and Madhukishwar has uh, you know gone to the right, uh, so the less said about her, the better. But what is really wonderful is that uh, Ruth Vanita um, uh, has, um, has has uh, has made major contributions to queer studies. Um, and to feminist studies. I just wanted to give a little bit of this background to also these discussions within the women's movement and then uh, show you uh, Sharmishta's work. So Sharmishta is, uh, you know, is, uh, belongs to a younger generation. Uh, and um, uh, she, uh, and 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 um, you, can, you can also see her politics in a way intersecting with that of, um, of Ruth Vanitas. And uh, uh, what we have shown is basically Sharmishta Roy's uh, photograph by Bikramjeet Bose. And it was commissioned by El India magazine for their feature on gender in 2015. And um, I, I, again, I could have shown a body of uh, Sharmishta Rai's, um, you know, abstract work, uh, which again, you know, uh, she, she, uh, there's, there's this way in which even her, her, her abstract uh, work um, is, is queered by her. But I, I won't go into that. I mean, you can read some of my essays on Sharmishta. Um, uh, they are available. Uh, and uh, I instead I decided to show uh, this portrait of hers from the El India magazine, uh, from a fashion magazine, because it is normally in these fashion magazines uh, where uh, you have these discussions on uh, on questions of uh, of, of um, you know gender fluidity. And um, this issue, uh, 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 you know, discards gender binaries, and it's and and it was gender um, non-conforming. Uh, and um, uh, as you can see, uh, Sharmishta Rai in this photograph, and I've always loved it from the first time I saw it because uh, it's it's it does not take on the victim, uh, you know, I mean, uh, position, nor is it uh, the position of uh, of an aggressor. Uh, what you find is just a confident stance of somebody who is effortlessly multiple. And and uncomfortable in her skin. And um, uh, we, uh, I uh, move on to uh, this this uh, uh, the corner of abstraction within the within the show. Uh, so I have this this troika, uh, Zarina Hashmi, who uh, you know, so three different generations of female abstractionists. Zarina Hashmi, um, uh, who has passed away, uh, uh, Purvai Rai, a younger fe uh, feminist. And um, and and um, and uh, Gargi Raina, who is uh, sixty-one years um, uh, now, uh, and um, uh, Zarina Hashmi's. Uh, you see Zarina Hashmi's work um, on the monitor, and um, uh, it's called House at Aligarh, nineteen ninety. 
uh, these are etchings on paper. And although Zarina lived, uh, you know, for uh, for decades in in New York, um, uh, home was home for her was always Anita. And uh, when she was um, 10 years old, um, the partition happened, and that trauma never left her. And therefore, her, in, in her work, uh, you will see that she's always parsing um, the politics of belonging and exile. And you find that that this, this, this theme of exile, of homelessness, is also picked up by Garki Raina and by Purva Rai in their works presented here. And again, uh, you see um, this, um, you know, the resources of uh, Islamic aid culture here. So you, uh, so you have titles where, uh, you know, Zarina tells us that, you know, her sister, uh, you know, asked her to sing a song. Um, uh, her father comes to, to check on them uh, at their home in Aligarh. Of course, she's dreaming about her, her childhood. Um, and um, uh, her, their mother is waiting for the motia to blossom. Um, and uh, th th this this subject is again um, parsed uh, by uh, Purva Rai, um, and uh, sh she made these uh, two two series uh, during the lockdown, 2020 era. You cannot claim this space on the left hand side, and uh, place of worship not found, 2020 on the right hand side. And uh, uh, Purva Rai was making this work during the during the lockdown. This was also in the run up to the the violence that attended the the construction of the Ram Mandir. Um, this was also the time of um, the anti CA protests, the Delhi riot, the Delhi riots. Uh, and when you look at this work, on the one hand, uh, you just think that these are archetypal cosmic diagrams. Uh, you know, you see uh, the mandala. Uh, you have a sense of doing a parikrama. Uh, you uh, you uh, you might also resonate with the form of the Kaaba in in, in one of the works, uh, but the title is telling you something else, and uh, the place of worship not found uh, is the place of worship not found because um, uh, you know religious fundamentalists have destroyed the place of worship, or is the place of worship not found because we have yet to build a place of worship where which respects humanity uh, of all use and uh, which uh, which is not agonistic and which does not divide people. And the, the other body of work also um, 2020 era not found, uh, that work uh, resonates uh, with the, especially the schism in that work resonates with uh, the work of Gargi Raina. Uh, you have Gargi Raina's uh, work here, and I'm just showing you the details uh, because it's impossible to uh, look at the entire grid on the red wall. Uh, and so the, uh, constructing the memory of a room uh, begins with this checkered floor pattern that uh, Garki found in a home in Lahore. Uh, uh, and Lahore was also where her, her, uh, her family had lived once. She belongs to a Kashmiri Pandit um, family. And um, so her ancestors would have moved from Kashmir to Lahore. And after partition, they would have um, uh, you know, come to Delhi. And um, as far as uh, Gargi goes, she has been living in Baroda uh, for many decades now. She studied at MSU and she has settled down there. And constructing the memory of a room uh, was made in the aftermath of the, um, the, the communal program in Gujarat in 2002. And um, she picks up this, uh, this checkered floor pattern from her home in Lahore. And th that becomes the trigger for the series. And uh, she begins to build a room uh, with this checkered pattern. And the, and, and the room is held together by a central axis. Um, the central axis is in a way a kind of surrogate for the self, but it's also a kind of, uh, it's, it's also a line which orients the viewer to the room as it uh, changes uh, uh, its, uh, its, its, its face many times and different objects are gathered in it, accrete in it, and then disappear. Now, as the viewer, in a way, transfixed by this line, continues to follow the series, um, towards the end, um, the line is ruptured and it becomes a schism. It, it, uh, it, it falls open. Um, and um, uh, Gargi is, of course, uh, talking about the partition here. She's talking about the rape of women on both sides of the partition. Um, and um, the last image, uh, is where you find this um, uh, this woolen ornament, which is worn by specifically by Kashmiri Pandit women, uh, and um, uh, this 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 work is also from in two, from two thousand five is also a way of her trying to 
bring different aspects of her, of her life um, uh, together, uh, both uh, the integral parts and the disparate parts. And uh, she's also thinking about uh, those who are marginalized, um, those who, whose, whose lives have been and homes have been destroyed because of um, uh, communal uh, conflict. Um, so on the one hand, uh, in Gujarat, uh, she stands with the Muslim minority community. Uh, but in, in, in Kashmir, uh, uh, in, in 1990, uh, uh, because of militancy, when the Kashmiri pundits had to leave their home and, uh, and were forced into exile, she stands with the Kashmiri pundits. And um, it is perhaps her way to talk about how uh, the minority community, uh, you know, regardless of which state they are in, um, they, you need to show your solidarity with them. Uh, um, this is Shilpa Gupta's uh, uh, hand, uh, 100 hand-drawn maps of India, uh, 2007 to 2008. Um, and um, uh, you have this fan, uh, which uh, and, and the breeze of the fan uh, activates uh, the pages of this map book. Um, and uh, as the book flutters, uh, you see um, uh, the maps which are drawn, uh, very crude uh, manifestations of maps which are drawn by different people who um, Shilpa, um, you know, um, sort of, uh, you know, had either met or uh, or who she sent an invitation to 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 draw in this book, and. Um, uh, with some of these maps look like dancing dervishes, uh, others look like uh, a kind of flattened bird, uh, or some of them look like a home, um, and and you know, or or like a disabled person. So each one, uh, you know, is it almost looks like an, an artwork in its own right. And uh, uh, on the one hand, you could just look at these as kind of crude manifestations of uh, you know um, of of, uh, of of classical you know cartography, but on the other hand, um, these very exotic maps. Uh, uh, also perhaps in a way signal or, or indicate the, the national imaginaries, uh, you know, the expectations of, of, of the citizens of India about the, 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 about the boundaries of this nation, about who belongs and who doesn't. Uh, you have Navjot's work, uh, which from a distance, uh, uh, you know, looks like this panoramic landscape. Um, uh, uh, and um, this is basically, uh, but when you go when you go closer, you realize that this, you know, that, that this is, um, you know, earth, which has been almost as if, the, you know, I mean, the bowels of the earth have been turned, uh, and um, the, 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 the trees are dead. And um, the, the water is contaminated, the air is contaminated. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and this is um, uh, um, a landscape from from Buster. Um, and, uh, and 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 uh, other areas from Chhattisgarh, and along with this, uh, along with this uh, spectacular landscape, you also have uh, also see photographs from the Koila Satyagraha. Uh, so you have um, the villagers who every year go on a Satyagraha uh, to uh, to uh, raise slogans and to fight against um, the excessive mining mining of their um, of, of their uh, of their land. We have um, uh, Gramar Collective's Azadi Ka Batwa. Again, this is a plantable flag with, uh, uh, with, consti uh, with constitutional freedoms inscribed on it, uh, which again talks about how, how we need to be an inclusive nation. You have uh, uh, this photograph, uh, which, uh, which I've always been fascinated by and I've also used in my book, The 13th Place. Um, it's a, a photograph of uh, Navjot and um, of Shanti Bai uh, uh, at the dialogue center, which um, they worked together to uh, to, um, to to build and and and, uh, and also uh, they 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 have they uh, along with uh, Navjot and Shanti Bai, there's Gesuram and Rajkumar and and other villagers from from Bastar uh, who. Uh, came together to create a place which is not supported by the government or by an NGO, but a place which is built by the artists, for the artists, but also a place to hold discussions between the artists and the other villagers, artists and activists, artists and municipal officers, and so forth. And uh, what I love about this photograph is that you have two people uh, with different uh, levels of privilege uh, to they, they are lingering at two ends of the table and 
and and the reason why I wanted to show this also was because I wanted to talk about how collaboration is not an angelic space. There are moments when there may be perfect understanding, and there are moments when uh, there is a lot a lot that remains unsaid, and it sort of piles up, uh, you, you know. At, in, 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 at, the, at the center of this uh, table, um, or, almost like uh, unre unrequited, um, you know, desires, and also, um, uh, you know, that which remains unsaid, conflict, uh, but also love, and uh, you can see this arrow of love, uh, in, in a way, connecting uh, Navjot and Shantibai. You have Shanti Bai's works here. Um, uh, I requested her to make a new body of work for this show. And uh, I was asking her perhaps if she wanted to talk about uh, her grandmother's stories, uh, which are related to the healing of our planet, especially because she was making these works during the COVID lockdown. And um, her mother abandoned her as a child and her father took her to her grandparents' house. So that's where she learned to forage and um, uh, to, uh, to also um, find new grains. Um, and uh, and uh, to, uh, to, uh, to to sing and dance, and uh, what is really lovely about uh, this body of work that she's created is that uh, whether it is her grandfather's story or her grandmother's stories, these stories are always about uh, they are about plenitude. They are never about lack. Although these are people who have been oppressed. Uh, for centuries, and they live extremely hard lives. Uh, they find their plenitude in, 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 in their own life worlds, in the forests, uh, which, uh, which they have actually preserved over the years, but from which they have been divorced and alienated by, uh, by extremely pernicious uh, uh, forest acts. And uh, despite all these hardships, uh, for example, when you uh, you find one of these stories where uh, she goes with her grandfather who hunts for some birds and then the grandmother sells these birds to put food on the table. And again, it's all about just hunting as much as you need. Uh, it's not about, uh, I mean, you know, these, they are not poachers. They are not greedy people who will just, uh, you know, destroy uh, an entire zone in the forest to make profit. So it's 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 about it's it's also about the humility of these people and the way in which they live in consonance with their environment, never looting it or plundering it, but always treating it with respect. You have Alkavi Nanavati. Uh, since we are talking about loss, uh, Shanti by losing her um, uh, her mother at a young age, uh, uh, Alkavi Nanavati uh, lost her mother suddenly a few years ago. And uh, that left a huge vacuum in her life. And she did not know how to uh, deal with this grief. So she started uh, you know, to, uh, to, 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 to shred her mother's uh, clothes, her saris and her blouses, and then to weave them and crochet them and put them back together. And these, she calls them her emotional, emotional experiments. These are cathartic acts. And, um, uh, and, and in um, Alkavina these works, you will find that she, uh, that she works in multiples. Um, uh, she, uh, she, uh, she, because she comes from a printmaking uh, 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 tradition, she, you, you will find that she works um, uh, in, in, uh, in series. And um, uh, along with this printmaking pedagogy that uh, informs her work, uh, there's also uh, the uh, the resources of her Islamic of the of the Islamicate culture, and by these resources I mean uh, this act of dhikr, which is uh, repeating the name of God, of immersing yourself in the name of God. So uh, again, you can as you can see, uh, you know there could be different forms of pedagogies, but also the the your home ethos, uh, your home languages, which also in a way um, uh, leave their imprint on 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 your work. Uh, there's uh, Gori Gill uh, 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 on the right hand side and Sosa Joseph on the left hand side. Uh, you have Sosa Joseph's uh, work, uh, uh, Pieta, and this is not a Pieta which, uh, you know, which, which is sort of, you know, sort of uh, subsumed in some kind of a theological inevitability. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a Pieta which strikes terror in your heart. It's not, it's not a Pieta which evokes um, uh, pity. Uh, instead, um, what you find is extreme grief 
an anchor. And um, uh, Susa's theater uh, is modeled on a newspaper article that she read in 2018, uh, which, uh, which was about this Adivasi woman uh, who had lost her son um, uh, to, to, to these extremist forces um, uh, on the campus. And um, uh, whenever I look at this work, uh, um, apart from the fact that, you know, I mean, it's sort of invested with a certain theater of the absurd quality or magical realism, um, it's, it's, um, it's, there's, 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 there are these, um, uh, uh, the, 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 the canvas is, is, is sort of brimming with, with disquiets and with, with manias of all kinds, with paranoias. Uh, and it's it's extremely disturbing. And at the center of it, you have this Adivasi woman uh, who is wearing a sari. But when you look closely, it's almost like a, a burning red vagina. Uh, and um, on the right hand side, you have Gauri Gill's uh, uh, Revanti and Madhu. And um, you have Revanti, uh, you know, again with her upraised arms. Um, her finger could almost touch the ceiling, and uh, you know, she, she, you know, it might just the ceiling might just tip over, and the sky could fall in. And uh, you have this very defiant uh, gesture of uh, Rivanti. And alongside you have uh, a, a more um, kind of, I, I would say, a stereotypical uh, kind of gesture of, uh, of, of a woman as a teacher. But uh, when, you, when you look at it closely and when you look at the context in which uh, these, uh, from which these uh, portraits emerge, you realize that it isn't. Um, it isn't just generic or stereotypical because actually these works uh, are emerged from an impromptu photography studio uh, in rural Rajasthan, where uh, Gauri Hill was invited by um, an NGO uh, to set up the studio and uh, to invite uh, adults, adolescent girls to present themselves in the way that they like. And when you look at Madhu reading, uh, this is a very important act. You and I can take this act of you know playing teacher teacher. Uh, as as uh, as something that is you know every day, but not Madhu because she belongs to a part of the country uh, where uh, girls are killed at birth, where girls are not able to receive an education. You have Anita Dube uh, again, one of my favorite performance videos, and uh, Kissa Nur Muhammad, and um, uh, you have. Uh, Anita uh, swapping identities, uh, gender, uh, class identity, uh, religious identity, uh, with a persona who she names Kisai, who she names Noor Muhammad, and Anita Noor Muhammad uh, speak in the most intimate and beautiful zuba. It's a Lucknowi zuba. They speak with humor and irony, uh, and uh, and love, and they speak about friendship and collegiality. And uh, what, is, uh, what is foregrounded in this video again is um, a confluential culture, which is what has been destroyed today by um, the Hindu right wing. And uh, in, 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 one of, uh, in, in one of the episodes in this video, uh, Anita Noor Mohammed talks about how uh, Noor Mohammed uh, you know, uh, decides to bring uh, these um, divine eyes uh, for Anita, which she needs to use in her artwork. And he makes a trip. In a single day, he travels both to the Sufi shrine uh, in, uh, in Ajmer Sharif and uh, also to the Vaishnava uh, shrine in, in Nath Dwara. Uh, Anju Dodia, uh, we have one of her um, early works, Portrait of a Girl, uh, 1991 from JNF. Um, th th this, of course, now has hist historic value. And um, uh, I mean, the, 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 pof, the portrait on the left is extremely powerful. Uh, it's almost as if uh, the, uh, the, 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 the artist persona uh, turns into a diagonal and dynamizes the space. And uh, you can feel the tension in the shoulder and the shoulder is in a way taunting the, the caginess of the, of the barred window. Um, you, on the right hand, you have learning to swim. Uh, again, uh, you know, a work that I remember from 1998. Um, and uh, I have written a lot about Anjadodia's work. Uh, the, 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 the essays are available. available. You, can, you can read them. Uh, we end with uh, Mithu Sen's um, uh, video. I have only one language and it is not mine. And 
we begin the exhibition with, uh, you know, women mouthing slogans um, and with the declamatory tone. But I end the exhibition with uh, a video where uh, everybody is speaking gibberish. So you have this performance video where Mitu Sen takes on this persona of Mego and she, uh, uh, you know, falls almost like a UFO into this um, government uh, supported uh, orphanage in, 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 in Kakanad in Kerala, uh, which uh, houses uh, uh, girls who have been uh, emotionally or sexually, sexually abused. And uh, one would have thought that she would have uh, perhaps, uh, you know, taken on uh, the, she, that, that she would have conducted interviews um, uh, and, and, and through the interviews, perhaps she would have uh, uh, produce a bond of empathy uh, with these uh, with these girls, but uh, instead she decides uh, to use gibberish uh, as her mode of communication. And um, uh, one of the reasons, perhaps, is also because uh, we feel that sometimes that you know that if you are able to use language, everything will be understood. But as we all know from experience, that uh, that by merely using language, we are not going to be understood by each other. That, uh, that empathy will not just emerge because we are able to talk. In fact, often uh, language uh, has a colonizing and legitimizing influence, uh, which, uh, which, which, which doesn't allow the conversation to move forward. In fact, uh, there are so many casteist uh, uh, you know, slurs and slurs against uh, uh, against people's economic background uh, within language. Um, uh, you know, whether we're talking about our home languages or whether in, in English, and uh, therefore language is is never neutral. And by using gibberish, perhaps she's able to start on the, uh, on, uh, from from a completely new. Uh, direction, uh, rather than use language, which is full of its own oppressive tonalities and, 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 um, and, and connotations. Um, she, by using gibberish, she's perhaps able to reach out to these people who have been forsaken. And um, uh, we have uh, your uh, uh, documentation from uh, Akitami. Um, uh, the uh, Akitami is going back and doing research on the women's movement. Uh, you, uh, she, uh, you, you have uh, pamphlets here. Uh, one of them is written by Vandana Sonalkar and Sharmila Rege uh, 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 on, uh, on, 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 on patriarchy um, uh, and its relationship uh, to the, the, the to Dalit women. And uh, of course, they're Savitri by Fule. But there are also uh, women writers from the Northeast. There are sister zines here, sister times. Um, and uh, with that, I think I'd like to uh, end um, this uh, presentation. I think I've taken far too long. Thank you. Thank you so much, yeah. Nancy. Yes. Uh, Nancy, if you stop sharing, then we'll come back all together yes. again. Yeah. Yes. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. For so many of us who are in other cities, yeah. who yes. unfortunately will not be able to see this, um, yeah. this stupendous exhibition that you put together, this not only gives us uh, such a detailed look at, uh, at different aspects of the exhibition, but with these stories, with these little asides, you thank, thanks so much. You've created this world within which this exhibition exists, which is the past many years of various kinds of women's movements that have uh, touched us across different registers and at the same time are also finding this opportunity to uh, speak to each other. So thank you, thank you very much for sharing that with us and our audience. Uh, we, uh, Pranav and I each have one question. So we are going to yes. we're going to start with that and maybe then see what questions are, have come in from our audiences as well. Yes. Um, you know, Nancy, listening to you, I was thinking that this itself is an archive, right? The fact that yes, we are recording absolutely. this talk, this, yeah. this is a talk we will go back to, we, other artists, scholars, young students will go back to, to even look at this material. Now, I was just thinking that given that in India, we are not so good with archiving, that yeah. we do not have often the wherewithal, the resources to actually archive artistic work, artistic stories, the backgrounds of these work. Because so many times in your in your storytelling, you told us that you know this wasn't available. 
Nilima had to look at the slides and then, you know, bring this out. Now, for so many reasons, these things, which should be in archives, are not there. And you've had to go dig, talk to people, find out, uh, go across board to make this happen. How, how difficult was it for you to actually, uh, A, choose the artists that you finally brought together, the 27? What made those choices for you? And uh, how do you think the, the absence of archives, in a sense, has impacted or can impact work like this? So uh, it was difficult, but not that difficult because in a, in a way, uh, you know, this exhibition is, is also my own biography. As uh, our guru Okwi Envisor says, the curatorial act also reflects the intellectual biography of the curator. Yeah. So when people said, oh, how long did it take you to put together, put, put this exhibition together? Uh, I would say a lifetime. And then they would, of course, you know, look at me and they say, of course, there goes Nancy, you know. But, but the thing is that it is, uh, you know, I mean, uh, the insights that I'm sharing with uh, yeah. all of you, uh, yeah, they are, uh, they are insights which have, uh, you know, been, been gathered from a lifetime of learning, of talking to artists, of listening to them very carefully. But also, each time I'm listening to them, I am also making my own notes in the margin, you know, my own disquiets, my questions. So I think that, uh, you know, this is a dialogue which has been happening for many decades. And um, I started, I mean, I, I have, I mean, I was writing on, for the newspapers as a culture critic from my early 20s. Um, then I went to film school and various other detours. Uh, but I, uh, I started writing catalog essays on women artists uh, from the late 90s. And my very first catalog was uh, on Anju Dodia's work. Um, and, um, and I always thank her for giving me this opportunity to, in a way, begin writing about women artists. Um, and uh, it just so happened that I was blessed by Anju. And uh, uh, after, after uh, you know, her invitation, I received many invitations from women artists. And then I, in a way, I became the, the writer who dedicated herself to the, to the lives and works of, uh, of female practitioners of contemporary art. And, um, and therefore, what you what you see in in this show again uh, is 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 just a junkie into everything that I have learned uh, over the decades through writing, through researching, and anyways, uh, I'm a digger, I'm an excavator, so I love digging. And um, you know, for me, this the act of interpretation of research and interpretation is something that I thoroughly enjoy. Uh, so it's I I. I, for me, that that is never difficult. But what is really difficult is, uh, you know, uh, tr trying to find a way. I mean, uh, that how, how do I find the funding uh, to show so many artists? So uh, I'm often stumped by those questions because I'm not very good with raising funding. Uh, my aspirations and ambitions are, you know, that I should show 30 artists. But of course, the budget is only to show seven artists. So then how do I stretch that? Yeah. Uh, and that's where, of course, you know, uh, I always find people who are supportive uh, and uh, and, and again, I'm blessed that, that I've always found uh, mentor figures, um, the allies uh, who have supported my exotic dreams and, and made them come true. And therefore, again, uh, you know, I mean, which is something that apart from thanking uh, all the museum officials, uh, I must thank all my artists because without their support, uh, they wouldn't have, this, this show wouldn't have happened. Thanks, Nancy. Pranav, you had a question. Uh, yes, Arun, thank you. Uh, Nancy, uh, I, do, I do have one question to ask you, but before that, thank you so much for that very uh, powerful, powerful presentation. It was really good. And uh, so my question is, uh, what role do you think the archive play in being a witness to all, uh, to being a witness to all this? And how does it help in disseminating the work of social movements, especially the ones which has, uh, which, uh, ones which uh, challenge dominant narratives. How do, you, how do you think that goes about? Yes, absolutely. The archive is a very important tool and a medium to question dominant hegemonic narratives, especially those narratives which are erased from uh, the mainstream discourse. And um, as I was saying earlier, um, and I, uh, that's why I just made these uh, few points uh, for, for all of you also, because you all are dealing uh, at the IFA, you're dealing with the archives. And um, 
what, what I was articulating at that, uh, in, in, at, in, the, in, in my introduction was that, uh, you know, when we think about the archive, it's not just about uh, talking about the past from the present. Uh, considering the situation that we're living in today, um, the fact that, uh, you know, uh, we have, we have, you know, damaged our planet um, to the extent that, you know, we are suffering from so many different viruses, which uh, don't seem to, uh, you know, make themselves scarce. And um, it's what, what is really important is to not think about the archive as some kind of a fetish object or a sealed container, but to think about an archival consciousness, an archival consciousness that we need to develop in the present so that we can anticipate the future. And I mean, that's the only way in which at least I think, you know, I mean, we, we should actually be looking at the archive today because I mean, you know, we, we, we can't, uh, you know, just deal with the weight of the past and then uh, stop there. The, the archives that we that, that we will generate today, uh, th these archives have to make a wager on our present and on our future. And that's extremely important. Uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, and uh, we have one question from our audience member, uh, Indra Chaudhary. So they say, uh, thank you for your very insightful talk. I especially found the idea of uh, the extended archival imagination very enriching to approach the archives and archival exhibitions. In connection, in this connection, I was wondering if you would share your reflections on the play between past and present, past in the present and past and the present, so to speak, that links the feminist movements in India to places, spaces, and bodily and ecological knowledge. Thank you for the question. Um, Yes, so for instance, uh, when I was talking uh, about, uh, you know, Shweta Bhattad's work or Akithami's work, mm -hmm. uh, modes by which we can actually heal our planet, uh, how do we retrieve wisdom lineages of our mothers and our grandmothers, uh, th this, this is the way forward. And, 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 and within the exhibition, again, uh, we have many works, whether it's Shanti Bai, whether it's, uh, uh, whether it's uh, Shweta, uh, Bhattar and the Gram Art Collective, or Akni Thami, uh, which, uh, which are talking about uh, new ways of, uh, of framing ecological questions. Not the same cliched, uh, you know, tropes that we use while we are, while we, uh, uh, while we are talking about the capitalist scene and its uh, effects. Thanks, Nancy. Uh, we have one comment uh, from uh, Mohan Rao uh, saying that the archive seldom, if ever, documents the subaltern. Um, and I was thinking, since we don't have any other audience question, maybe just ending with uh, one question to you that, you know, when we also think of archives or the way we are building the IP archive, we realize that for everything that you choose to put in the archive, you have to choose because of resources, because of your curatorial, or uh, decisions, everything that you choose in, at the same moment you're choosing out uh, a certain body of work. And uh, I think that goes for everything. In We are a funding organization, so we are grant makers, project implementers, we have to choose projects from proposals. You are a creator, you have to choose a, a body of work to, rep, to put out when you think of an exhibition. Uh, so if when we imagine the archive and if we imagine the silences that are in the archive, how does one deal with those silences not becoming uh, completely frozen in the way we understand the world? How do we keep a certain amount of probably openness, flexibility, porousness between what is there in the archive and what is not there, what is elsewhere, uh, but is also important uh, the moment you look at it probably from a different set of parameters of judgment or evaluation. Is it at all possible or will it always be this conflict of what is within and what is without the archive? Yes, I think this is this is the dilemma that all of us as practitioners, uh, you know, have to confront. Uh, each time we make a certain choice, it means that we are leaving out something or somebody. Uh, Although, as I said, I was just asked to put together a few artists, I still expanded the show, you know, to, to be as big enough as, you know, I mean, almost having 30 uh, positions, including uh, archival documents, etc. And uh, of course, I couldn't have stretched the show further. And, and I also did not want to because, uh, you know, it, 
I don't just make tokenistic gestures. Right. That's not the way I function. Uh, I have to think and feel very strongly about what I'm saying. Otherwise, I don't do it. Uh, you know, so I'm not a woke ski because I don't belong to that generation. Uh, you know, I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm not interested in political correctness. Um, what, what I'm interested in are, uh, you know, my, my dialogues with people from diverse backgrounds and the things that I learn from them. Uh, and I, that, that I learn from them with empathy, with humility. Uh, and uh, of course, any, any, any you know, I mean, uh, project that you take up, there will be huge gaps and silences. But I would then say, let a thousand flowers bloom, let a thousand projects bloom, yeah. you know, because yeah. uh, it doesn't mean that, the, the, that you know, I mean, I, I have not worked with other artists, those, those who are not in this show. In fact, when my book comes out, you'll see that I've worked with uh, many more artists than the ones that I've shown uh, in this exhibition, and um, they will all be represented in that book. Uh, and, um, you know, I mean, there is always an occasion to yeah. show uh, different constellations. Because yeah. if I were to even show a hundred uh, artists, uh, there would be no structure to the show. Uh, I would not be able to make my arguments as forcefully as I'm making them. Uh, my point is make 50 more shows like yeah. this, yeah. you know, from your own position. Yeah. And uh, it's not about something being better or worse, less or more. No, the point is that let, let there be hundreds of such projects so that we can continuously, uh, you know, manage to lessen bridge the bridge these this this gap between what gets shown and what remains you know unshown or gets erased from people's memories thanks thanks so much thanks nancy uh i think uh pranav we can end it here sure sure yeah so thank you thank you so much nancy for this uh wonderful talk so it has been a it's been a pleasure spending this evening with you and thank you for engaging us so deeply and sharing such a wonderful talk again. Uh, thanks to everyone who participated both on Zoom and on our Facebook Live. The session has also been rewarding thanks to your insightful questions. The thanks, IFA thanks. archive. Yeah, yeah Pranav, uh, just let us mention till when the exhibition will be on. Uh, Nancy, sure, when yeah. on 16th till? October. 16th October. Yeah, please do come. Bombay at the CSMBA. So if you if you're in Bombay and haven't seen it, please please go and go and uh, take a tour. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and IFA Archive will be back with more similar evenings. So stay tuned. Follow us on our social media platforms. And thank you. Thank you thank so you. much. Have a good evening. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.